Are you ready? What is up, everyone? It is me, your favorite actor, Mark Schwann, filling in for Michael J. Putty. My God, the host of the show is a slacker. This is like my second time in a month, not even filling in for him. Jeez, it goes to show who really cares about this place, right? But, you know, I can't do this show by myself. Did it once, never again. So joining me, good friend of mine in the wrestling world, probably the biggest sweetheart in wrestling, Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for everyone's favorite correspondent. She's mine personally. Samira, let's go. It's me. Oh, thank you for the nice intro. That was so sweet. How are you, Mark? <laughs> I'm doing well. Happy New Year to you. I know we're it's midway through January, but hell, why not? How's your new year? It was good. I was actually out this year for the first time in like four or five years. So it was nice to be out of the house. Oh, damn. What did you <laughs> yeah. do? Anything fun? Yeah, me and my, I went over to my best friend's house and we got ready. And then we met up with our other friend at this bar slash club. And it was just so nice that we were all just like, dance to have a good time together. So it was a good time. What did you guys end up doing? Sick. Sick. Thanks for the invite. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, l- listen, dude, I'm in, I'm a dad. So like, what, what, what can I do? <laughs> no, Was I, she up till 12 or did she sleep? Dude, come on. Seriously, she's a year and a half. No way. Um, <laughs> no way. Uh, no, actually, you know, we made the most of it. So New Year's Eve is is my favorite holiday. So we stayed in or Pizza Hut, watched 90s movies, like kind of oh. relived the 90s, like our youth. And yeah, just it was a chill time. We 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 had uh, we made the most of it. But uh, Samira, some big news happened this week. What's that? Um, <laughs> you know, so something that probably affects you because you're such a good friend of hers. Emily J made her debut in Ring of Honor. Did you see I that? I was so, of course I saw that. I I obviously knew, I was told, like, I, I've known about this since, like, she got an email. And then the day of, I remember we're just, I'm sitting there waiting with her, like, to find out, is she going to be on? Is she not going to have it be on? Like, because she knew she was going to be there, obviously, as an extra. She just didn't know what she was doing until, you know they have the board and i'm just like sitting there waiting for like an update like are you gonna have a match are you not gonna have a match and then once we do and then and then saw the match i like started tearing up when i saw her i was like she's come such a long way i'm so happy for her it comes such a long way in such a short time i mean like she's only been like what is it a year in a business or a little bit more it's about a year and a few months i want to say all right so a year uh incredible like she's she's seriously like she's only going to get better, you know, and she, she's still so young. So like the you know, sky is the limit for it. Like she looked like she belonged, you know, she just looks the part there on TV, which is like, you know, half the game, I think. Definitely. And she's like, she's getting there. Like, I, I can't believe the much progress she's made in the year and she's going to keep on going. I believe her in her so much. So like seeing that, like, you know, seeing her and Brittany Jade, who, you know, no strangers to BCW, like, right. Right. Can't it's, forget it's Brittany Jade. So insane. I was just like, so happy to see them. Like they deserve that so much. I'm so proud of them. Yeah, man. Like, you know, it, it, it's always cool to see when you see like, you know, someone that you work with, you know, get that spot, you know? Um, and uh, listen, I know she's joined forces with the governor, AJ Pan. <laughs> we got a good question of judgment there for that, but you know, still kudos to her. It was a cool feeling. Speaking of BCW, hey, we have a show coming up, right? Yes. I'm so excited to be reunited with everybody. I mean, but we had a lot of crazy things happen at BCW, Mark. I mean, you weren't there, but like I'm I know you saw the changes in everybody. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, I've been following along. Unfortunately, I had Coxsacky, uh, couldn't make it to the show. Coxsacky sucks, by the way. If you ever have it, like, Godspeed. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, like, we have a huge tag main event here for Welcome to the New Year, January twentieth at Richfield Park, New uh, Richfield Park, New Jersey. I want to say New York because I am a New Yorker. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, Anthony again going and Darius Carter reunite in the eons to face Jay Bougie in face. Was it the enemy of my enemy is my friend, and that's exactly what's going on here. Samira, you were there for it. I mean, t- tell me a little bit uh, about the madness that happened. Damn, it's at- like. Mark like I'm sure you saw it was it was just insane and then the just like being back there and getting like the whole scoop backstage just trying to talk to them, and everybody's mad and it's just a mess and no I'm, Base is I'm trying excited to, rip the door to off. see I'm just like I was just like what the heck is going on like please don't hurt me I'm just trying to do my job like I know you're mad I'm excited to see how this is going to play out exactly like this is I don't know. Like, if there's one person you don't want to mess with, I mean, I mean, your face is very scary, but you don't want to mess with Darius Carter. So I'm, I, I'm interested. I mean, you know that more than out. anyone. <laughs> I, I, I've, I've had my fair share of yelled at, uh, getting yelled at by Darius. So I, I hey. wish good luck to Bougie and Face, but uh, I mean, Gangone, you, you also got to watch too. You can never, you know. I mean. With all due respect, Samir, have you ever been thrown into a turnbuckle by Darius Carter? No, and I don't want to be. I have. I, I don't have. think it's that would fun. ever be fun. It's not fun. It's not fun. No, you but don't want to be ma- on his bad side. Face is a maniac, though. You know, like uh, th- that's the thing. Like, you know, he's the one person that he's, that's a wild card. You don't know what you're going to I mean, he threw his own partner, his own buddy, Jay Bougie, to the side to literally th- throw down with Darius Carter. So... Again, I'm excited for it. January 20th, if you're in a tri-state area, I do recommend you check it out. If not, it's going to be available on Title Match Network. BCW, welcome to the new year. It is going to be a banger. But, Samira, that's enough about the indies. Let's talk about what's going on in the world of WWE and AEW. So, Eric Bischoff has been known to, uh, you know, air his grievances with AEW quite a bit, kind of poking the bear. And he made a headline here, Fightful Wrestling at Fightful. Eric Bischoff, signing Mercedes Monet would not do anything for AEW. They're becoming TNA. Pretty bold statement. Like, you know, a lot of Mercedes Monet fans, a lot of AEW fans definitely got angered here. But, you know, he may have a point. Does Mercedes Monet face more pressure than any other free agent signing in the history of free agents? I don't know. I don't know because it's like she has a lot of options where she she could go back to WWE she could stay on the independence for a while or she could sign to AEW hey she could even sign to TNA like she has like endless options but I know like she's gonna go where she is gonna obviously get paid a lot and where she knows she's worth being at uh, I don't. It's, I just, it does I sound like know. it's gonna be. I mean, like I think it was Sean Ross Sapp that did report that it looks like, you know, barring anything outrageous last minute, that it looks like it is going to be AEW. Um, you know, so like, I, and I think like you know, there's a lot of anticipation here for it. Like, I know a lot of people are excited to possibly see her debut there. And like you know, I know there's been like a lot of remarks about how AEW and Tony Khan have been booking the women's division over there, and it is getting more and more stacked. But you know, it seems like the expectation for Mercedes Monet is to turn it around, or like you know, some people are saying some naysayers, like Eric Bischoff, is saying that like she's not going to do a thing. She's not going to be a needle mover. It's just going to be they don't necessarily know how to book, you know, these former WWE stars. Um, what, what what is your take on that? No, I have to agree. I think they can book the women a little bit better. I don't know. Like, I I don't know. Like, I just want to see her do more because I, I definitely want to see her in Japan more. I thought that mm-hmm. was, like, a cool thing when she showed up with, like, Stardom and New Japan. And then, I mean, I could see her working with some of the girls there at AEW if they just, like, have it booked right and how they're gonna push it out i think as long as they know how to do that they're set but i don't i just 
I don't know. Like, it, there's just, just so much rumors going around between she's going to WWE, she's going to AEW, and I'm not, like, I I just don't know where she's going. I, I'm just happy wherever she goes. I'm excited to see her come back and whatever possibilities we'll see her up in. Yeah, I mean, same here. I, I love Mercedes Monet, Sasha Banks, whatever you would name you want to float around. Uh, you know, she knocks it out of park 10 times out of 10. Uh, you know, it, it does seem like... I, and I hate to say it, it seems like there is going to be monumental pressure for her if she does wind up go, indeed going to AEW, uh, just because of like that factor alone. Just the expectation, the bar is so high. You know, she is the boss. You know, she she's the main event. She's a she's a feature attraction. She's an A list star in some people's eyes here. Um, and you know, just because of the state of the women's division there in AEW, and again, the, the star power that they have, lack of TV time. Uh, for some, like it, it's, I think it's, it is an uphill battle. Does this mean that she can't do it? No, I think Mercedes Monet will be up for a challenge. And you brought up uh, Japan. That's definitely something she loves. And I think that's probably a, a major factor here. It's probably one of the reasons why, you know, a deal broke, uh, didn't happen with her in WWE. I mean, wasn't there just like reports recently about WWE trying to work with some of these companies in Japan as of late? So maybe that's also going to be, if she were to consider to go over, that could also be a possibility. Like, hey, if she goes back to WWE, she can do some work with Japan at the same time because if they're building that relationship. So, I mean, right. it, it it's so uh, it's like, shimmer, like, right? Like we're saying, like, um, I thought it was. I don't, or I might have this wrong. wrong. I feel like it was AJPW. I I I remember seeing something. I don't remember what company specifically, but I mean that's a possibility. But also at the same time, when we think of AEW, unless it depends what contract here she is, she could work then anywhere as well. Like she could go to all these other companies if she if she would like to. And and that like you know shows like you know the forbidden door opened up. She can do move wherever she wants like especially that relationship with new japan so that that would be easy with her so i don't know now the more that i think about it and the more we talk about it, i'm like okay i could see the AEW relationship because of new japan right right and like you know she gets to keep the mercedes money name most likely there like, you know she's gone all in on that and I think another thing with WWE is like they wanted her to go back to Sasha Banks. I and mean, that probably was another thing that was just like, mm, no, uh, I'm invested in this. Let's do this. I can't blame her. You know, like, you know, she wants creative control here. And like that, that's probably the better way to go. But and new faces, new people to wrestle. I mean, obviously, then she has her some former coworkers there, but it's also new people, new experiences. Like it's it's a change of, you know, scenery and everything. And, you know, if she is the one to help skyrocket that women's division to like new heights, then, you know, that cements her legacy even more. And that'll think... bring in a new crowd for them, too. It's because a lot of people do love her and want to know where she's going to end up. It is a big, like, topic of conversation. I mean, we're talking about it. And, like, we, we just, we know how big of this would be. Girl, I've said it time and time again, Mercedes Monet, she breathes, she trends. Uh, that, that's the star power she has. But moving on, though, Samira. So a uh, lot of weird stuff happened. Did you see this whole thing between Hook and Jinder Mahal and Tony Khan just getting involved here, tweeting like a madman? Well, Russell Ops, at Russell Ops, Tony Khan questions why there's no rage for Jinder Mahal getting a WWE World title shot next week. It puts his tweet out there. A double standard. Hook, 21 career record on winning streak. Calls out the champ, a logical challenge, sparks online outrage. Ginger has literally lost every single match he's in for the past year, immediately gets title shot, wears the rage, AW Dynamite tomorrow on TBS. And, you know, Ginger Hall responds. It's been a whole thing. Um, what do you think, Samir? Does Tony have a point here? I was just like, what is happening? Like, I got sent that tweet in one of my group chats. I'm like, I'm like, wait, is this real? I'm like, are you guys seriously? I'm like, what is happening? And then... I and then everybody just plays along with them. I'm just like, what is, what is happening? Like, why? I, I don't know. Like, I'm just like sitting here, like, just everybody focus on your, focus on your own company. I'm not trying to be mean or anything. Like, just like, let them do what they want to do. That's like their plan. That's 
that's their creative direction and how they want to take things. And hey, it seems like the crowd likes it. The crowd likes Jinder Mahal. I like Jinder Mahal. Like it's it's that's funny loves Jinder Mahal, Mahal, by the way, too. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like like let them do what they're doing and like and then you promote your people. You are two different companies, two different bookings. Let's two different like, audiences. Let's like, let's be exactly. real. Exactly. Like you have a different like you said, audience, like how you do things, they don't do it the same way. It's like theirs is more directed towards like WWE's like I would say almost like in a sense kid friendly. They're not out there like so much like AEW is like blood and extreme matches, like not so extreme, but like they're more in a sense more hardcore than WWE is. It's very different. Right. And you have different directions. Like I I don't know. I think honestly, I mean this is gonna have, I think a a negative effect for Tony Khan. It's not going to be this, the the same way he's thinking. He kind of reminds me back in the '90s when Eric Bischoff on uh, on Nitro gave away that Mick Foley was going to be winning the World Heavyweight Championship on Raw because Raw was uh, pre recorded and WCW was live at that point. And what happened? Everyone switched to Monday Night Raw. It, there was more ratings than ever, and that, that kind of changed the directory of WWE to make it. Um, as far as the, the ratings war, I feel like more people are going to tune in, if anything, to Jinder Mahal because they're just big. There are a lot of fans of Jinder Mahal out there. Um, believe it or not, as Twitter is evidence of that. And uh, I, I think that's going to have a negative effect on him. I think someone's got to take control of his of his Twitter. He's, he has to have a social media guy. He, he can't be running this anymore. Oh, my God. I can't. But then, not to not to knock Hook. I mean, he does have a point. Like Hook yeah. has the accolades to, you know, being a world championship. Oh, because uh, so uh, he's is it he one of the bookers? Then book him up more. Right. <laughs> like so, I'm just like, why are you saying if you help book the show? <laughs> make it make sense. I know that's that's what I was confused about. I'm like, okay, then why are you saying that then? <laughs> I, I love this business. It's too good. It, it's wild. And you know what? You know who's the biggest culprit of this right now? Who, who's the biggest shit stirrer of this all? Who? Whoever runs the USA Network social media account. Oh my god, for real. <laughs> it's a beast. I love it. I hope they're getting paid well. No, I really don't. do. <laughs> they don't. It's just like social media managers. Let me tell you from experience. We get no love. <laughs> oh my gosh. But uh, yeah, I mean, was like, whoever's running an account was probably just sitting back, it's like ah, oh, glory. <laughs> but uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, here we are. I mean, like, what do you think about Hook though? You think Hook is gonna? Do you think he's got a good shot at facing Samoa Hmm. I mean, he's been he's been doing really really well. It's been cool to see you know how far he's come in the time that he's been in an AEW. I think he you know he's getting there. I think he, I don't know if now is the time. Right. But he's getting, he's getting there. Right. I, I don't necessarily, like, against Mojo, I just don't find it believable. Like, you saw him stacked up next to each other mm-hmm. on AEW Dynamite, and he's like, you know, like, Hook is lean. He can wrestle. He can wrestle like the fuck out of anybody. Samojo is a big monster. Like, like, uh, Hook is like an hors d'oeuvre. For Samoa Joe. Not even a meal. Not even a snack. It's just a little, <laughs> little hors d'oeuvre. You know, dip the shrimp in the uh, shrimp cocktail sauce. I want some more. Oh, there's no more. That sucks. Like, that's what, that's what it looked like there. It's like, I, it's it's going to be hard to believe that, like, or or maybe that's what they want. You know, hold David versus Goliath. I think maybe as they keep building it, maybe it'll, like, It'll change, you know, people's minds. I think. I think if they, you know, pl- keep playing their cards right, right. And hey, props to Hook. I mean, he gets a major reaction. Went right face to face against Mojo and called a shot one week. Um, you know, so no fear. You got to respect that. Taz's son. I mean, he's obviously a badass. But we'll see what happens there. Moving on, Samira. Going on to more news here. Oh, this is a big one that broke out here Friday. Wrestle Features at Wrestle Features. According to the latest edition of WON, there are no plans for Roman Reigns to work Elimination Chamber next month. 
The Australia rumors aren't accurate. Reigns is not even scheduled for the show. He's never been advertised, and there's no plans for him to be for him that date right now. A lot of speculation before that The Rock was going to face Roman Reigns at the Elimination Chamber in Perth, Australia. Seems like that's not the case. Seems like we were heading toward WrestleMania 40. Samir, what do you think? Is this a lock? Roman Reigns versus The Rock, WrestleMania 40 in Philadelphia? I would hope so, honestly. Like, I... <laughs> I can't see that happening at the Elimination Chamber in in Australia. No offense, but like you're going to want this match on the grandest stage of them all. This has been rumored for what? Like not one, 4 o'clock two... in the morning either. <laughs> like this has been rumored for what? Like a year or two now? Like eight two days? Years. Like, yeah. So it's like it's going to happen on the grandest stage of them all. It's going to happen for Philadelphia. I'm I'm personally very excited for that. Like Are you going? Oh heck yeah, I am going. I got like three <laughs> bookings already by at the at the time of this. I got three bookings. I'm gonna be there. I live like an hour from Philly, so you know I'm going. I'm coming down. So like, but I'm just like this. That's when it's gonna happen. the The biggest show of the year. This is what we we all come for. Like, there's no way it's not gonna happen there. What about Cody though? I mean, like this whole time know. we had a whole documentary about him. Finishing the story, like I, I'm, I'm gonna best. I want the man to finish his story. I know. I always say I will die on this hill that he should have won at the last WrestleMania. I was so upset that he lost. I was, I was so upset. I was like, nobody talked to me for the rest of the night. I'm done. <laughs> I think I remember you saying that, but like, I was so upset. I, I don't know. I mean, like, I love The Rock. I am a huge Rock fan. Big inspiration of mine. I, it, this kind of I I can't help but feel bad for Cody Rhodes. Like what what happens to him then? Like what what's his story then? Of WrestleMania to, to face Gunther to is it maybe did he get into a triple threat match or or is just why is the story over? I don't know. Like because I I feel like we've been waiting for Reigns and Rock for so long. Like I don't I I can't see them inserting Cody into that. Maybe like Cody comes out afterwards. But at the same time, it's like do we think? The Rock is going to be the one to th- dethrone Roman Reigns. Personally, I don't think so. Like, I just no. don't see that happening. Maybe, I just think maybe if he, if Cody were to come out the end, like, let's say Roman, you know, Roman's going to beat Rock and then Cody comes out, like, something like that. Like, but I know. Cody needs Like, what, well, WrestleMania 9? Well, like, Yokozuna, Hulk Hogan type of deal? I'm going old school on you. I don't even know if you were born yet for that. Was I? What year was that? <laughs> I what forget. I don't, even want, I don't even want to go there what year that was. Uh, it was uh, early 90s. Um, anyway. Oh, no. I was 99. So not, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a rapper shot of wrestling. I'm just going to go jump off my armor here. Uh, anyway. Uh, <laughs> no, but like, I, I don't know. The rock, I don't know I can't, how they're going to play it out now. Like, So what keeps going back to my mind, right, is... I don't know if you saw The Rock's, uh, one of his latest Instagram posts, uh, you know, talking about, like, you know, him coming back, et cetera, et cetera. But you see the caption, you're talking about making history, doing something that's never been done before, right? I, that line captures me. Like, The Rock, he does a lot of things, does everything with purpose, including his words that he uses. I'm stuck in that because I'm wondering what the fuck does he mean? What does that mean? Never been done before. What do you take of that? I saw that and I was curious as well. It's just like, what is what is going on? What does he have up his sleeve that that's gonna happen? Like, so that that does he doesn't really wear sleeves, so so I don't know. <laughs> Dad joke. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know. I'm very curious to see what that means. Like, I'm, but it gets me excited because I like not knowing. Like, I also I loved that. I love that we didn't know he was going to show up on SmackDown. I loved that. I love not knowing that stuff is going to happen and I get surprised. So not knowing what he means by that is like so good because I'm like, okay, now I'm hooked. I gotta watch and see what's going on. Like, what's exactly going to happen because you just don't know. Right. Right. And like never happened before. I mean, like, dude, I, I've been a wrestling fan for 30 plus years. You know, I feel like I've seen it all. Um, you know, some people are speculating, oh, is it going to be a triple threat? Well, we've seen triple threats before in main events, WrestleMania. Is it going to be that he's going to announce he's going to wrestle Roman Reigns next year? Well, we've seen that before, too. Literally, The Rock did that. Like, 
a lot of people that are throwing stuff out there we've seen before you know and, and the rock is a big history nut when it comes to wrestling so like he would know better than anyone what if he joined the bloodline? He's like, you know what? Forget it. Holy I fuck. The blood. <laughs> <They're> like... <laughs> Can you imagine that's what happens? And we're clipping this. Then I said it as like a complete joke. And he just joins the bloodline. He's like, you know what? <laughs> I'm joining. Girl. That'd be iconic. That would be the biggest swerveball. The biggest oh. curveball. I can't even speak right now. Like that. I never even thought of that. That's an awesome I, idea. I'm just starting to think of like outlandish things, like so. Yeah, that's that's what we have to get to. That we have to just think of an outlandish <laughs> shit. Because he said on the Pat McAfee show before, like you know, he was approached by doing Rock versus Roman Reigns, uh, WrestleMania, I think last year, um, and they couldn't make it work out. Uh, but like one of the things was he didn't want to do like just a one off. He didn't want to do like just like a one and done deal. He wanted something. He wanted to mean something. He wanted to to have lasting meaning. So the fact that they're able to get him to come back for this, it means like there's something big that's going to happen. It's not just going to affect WrestleMania. It's going to be a, like, it's going to be a ripple effect all throughout WWE, maybe for like the rest of the year or maybe for all of time. Oh my God, so. now I'm nervous. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> I'm nervous because I don't know, but I'm excited. Now I'm very excited. Right. For Cody though, like what the hell is he going to do? I, I he Give him something good, please. Let him turn heel and go beat up The Rock. I think that'd be funny. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Samir. Well, that, that's all I have for TV. I, for for news again. I'm flap. God damn it! <laughs> all right, Samir. Here we are for a TV takedown. Uh, let's start off with Monday Night Raw. So CM Punk and Drew McIntyre had that hell of an exchange. Oh, that, that was probably the best promo work actually I've seen from Drew McIntyre. Um, Here's PW Chronicle. This was trending quite a bit, actually, on Twitter at the time. PW Chronicle, at underscore PW Chronicle. The fact that Drew McIntyre could legitimately kick the shit out, uh, out of and throw CM Punk around the ring like a sack of potatoes intrigues me. Give me this McIntyre versus Punk feud. I think a lot of people could agree with that. Like, I would love to see that matchup happen. But, like, you know, again, I think WWE, Triple H, all creative there. Everything happens for a reason, especially as we are on the road to WrestleMania officially. Do you think Drew McIntyre is going to play a factor here in the CM Punk, Seth Rollins storyline? Maybe. I think especially after what happened on Raw, I think it did definitely like kind of change a lot of people's minds. Like, could it be just an elimination chamber thing on the way to on the road to WrestleMania? Because I'm sure that what they're trying to do is obviously Rollins versus Punk at uh, Mania, especially like after everything in the this history that they've had going on between Punk and Rollins, like before Punk came back to WWE and then how Rollins reacted when Punk came out and like, just like this whole thing that they keep going on. I can't, I cannot not see them doing something at Mania with that. But yeah, I, but like I said, I think like what happened on Raw changed it. So I feel like it could be just like, like them to at elimination chamber at most. No, I mean, for now, I could see that. The thing is, what's wild about the road to WrestleMania, right? One of my favorite parts about it is like the writers and creative, they go into it with like a set plan, right? But based on fan reactions, sometimes those plans go to shit and they have to call an audible right away. You know, we've seen it happen with Kofi Mania, right? We've, happened, we've seen it happen with Daniel Bryan. You know, we've seen it happen quite a few times where it's just like, oh, shit, like, you know, the fans, they want this. And they're being overtly loud about it. So we need to go with this. You know, you, what's saying is strike when iron is hot. You know, Drew McIntyre is pretty hot right now. I'm not like, you know, physically, I guess he's a good looking man, but like, you know what I'm talking about. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like I, I honestly, this is the best version of Drew McIntyre that I have seen. I think a lot of people would agree with that. Um, and there, there's definitely something personal in there. there. There's definitely a story to be told there. You saw it was a great exchange between CM Punk and Drew McIntyre. Also, great exchanges here with Seth Rollins and, and uh, CM Punk. Like, it, there's a lot of money here. I don't necessarily think you make it. I don't think you make it a triple threat. I don't think you do that. 
But yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't see Drew McIntyre going away at all. Like I can even see him getting involved somehow, some way, or maybe he aligns himself with Seth Rollins. You know, like the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Going back to that old saying, like I, I just don't see him going because I don't see where he goes from here on his road to WrestleMania. That Drew McIntyre, I'm talking about. That's true. Because then it's like then you know Royal Rumble comes around like where. Like, I, I don't see him winning. Like, it's like, where's his place next afterwards? But it's like, again, like now things change. Like we, we, we were set Rollins and Punk and now he's in this. And it's like, okay, so if he's not in this after this, then where does he kind of go from here? Like, what's next for him? When is his contract up? Because I know the deal's not done yet, right? Wasn't, th- wasn't there talks that it was coming up or something? It's coming up. It is coming I up. Remember. I remember it being talked about, but I forget for when it was. It's after Mania, though, right? Like that's that's what I'm assuming. That's after Mania, but I could be very wrong. Oh. oh, that's I don't know. That could play a factor, especially if it is before Mania. But I would think it's after. If oh. it's be- if it's before Mania, it'll be interesting. That would be very interesting. Like, you know, maybe him and, and Punk face off uh, at Elimination Chamber. As you said, a loser goes home match. You know, I don't know. I don't. I don't necessarily know what, what's going to happen. I just feel like it's just like it's just too. But it, you're definitely going to see him a final two to Royal Rumble. I think that's that's a lock. I, I'm willing to put money in that one. Oh, or maybe Punk they, and McIntyre. Yeah. Or maybe they even start off one and two. But at some point, it's just going to be the both of them. Yeah, the I think so yeah, it's definitely cool. at some point, it'll be the two of them. Right. But then, like, with how this is going, though, it, there's no way in hell it just ends off the Royal Rumble, especially if one's eliminating the other. Most likely yeah. Punk eliminating McIntyre. Yeah, and then that's what I think will lead to, like, obviously, Elimination Chamber. Well, I, I, I don't I don't see it ending there, though. It just it, it, The flames are too hot. Too hot, man. It, it's like... It was like when when Sami Zayn, right, with the Bloodline last year, right, when like you know, turn like turn to Roman, Royal Rumble, flame was hot, had his match eliminated elimination chamber. We thought for a moment there that he could actually win, lost, but it was still hot. So he still had an angle with the Bloodline though at WrestleMania. He has a main event actually and won. Like I just don't see like Drew McIntyre just going off somewhere else. Yeah. That's it's like I, at I the same time you don't want to insert him into what he has going on with Rollins. Like I, because it doesn't, like it doesn't make sense. Because we're we we're still sticking with the thing. Rollins is super pissed. He's back after all this stuff that's happened. Like you know they have their own little thing together. Like I just can't see this again being a triple threat. Like how we were talking about like um Reigns and uh, Rock and Rhodes. Like I don't I don't know. I, I just make this whole show triple threats. I, I guess that's what I'm getting at. <laughs> Mark wants everybody to have their their moment and their shot. No, I don't. Like, oh no, I'm not that person. I'm not that person. <laughs> <laughs> I like. I've been like so many times in this show. Like, not everyone deserves their moment at WrestleMania, and then here I am. Like, I don't know. You get a moment. You get a moment. You get a moment. <laughs> Um, moving on though, <laughs> sticking on Monday Night Raw, actually, speaking of Royal Rumble, Nia Jax is trending quite a bit here. She had a hell of exchange with Rhea Ripley. Rhea Ripley, huge pop, by the way. Goes to show how many people do not like Nia Jax. But, uh, even WWE is posing this question, actually. This comes from WWE at WWE. Is Nia Jax a, is Nia Jax a lock to win a 2024 Women's Royal Rumble match? I find it interesting that came from the WWE official yeah. Twitter account. You know, it, it makes me it makes me wonder because you know at one point I thought it was gonna be Becky, you know, like maybe Bailey. Uh, what do you think, Samira? Is Nia Jax a legit threat to win the Royal Rumble? I don't know. Like, I mean, especially them tweeting it, it makes it like a part of me thinks like, no, you're just like you're posing the question. But I don't I don't know. Like I I feel like I don't know. I just I don't 
think she is because i was starting to think like before like all this i'm like okay like who could enter and i you know who do we keep seeing that signed to wwe that we have not seen anywhere yet like wrestle jade cargill so I'm is that your lot to win it yes i like i keep saying like <laughs> If she enters, she just can't lose. Like, you know what I mean? Like, she, they brought her in and they've been bringing in her in hot. Like, she can't lose if she enters, okay? So, like, when they said that, when I saw that about Naya, and I'm just thinking, you know, the potential of if if this is her moment, if this is her debut, Jade can't lose. She just can't, honestly. But if, I don't, if I, I don't think she makes it, I don't think she makes her debut at Royal Rumble then, you know, because I think that would be, for everything you said, it would be too obvious. That she's going to win, and if and, she loses, I that might hurt. And the they only time pre- she could like debut after that is like Mania or Raw after Mania, because there's no Mania. other bigger stage for her to debut at, like than those two. But like, but like I said, I can't if she's not in the Royal Rumble, then maybe Nia Jax might have a chance. It's a, it's just like I keep trying to think of who else is in that spotlight to that would be like okay she's definitely a contender to definitely win this i would love to see jade cargill debut at royal rumble but like i feel like the best move possible for her would her debut with raw after mania um and then she could skyrocket from there it buys her a lot of time but uh nia Jax, man i mean this is interesting because like why have that promo exchange with ray ripley you know like she she got in her face and it was a hell of exchange and you know Nia Jax starting to turn her haters around. Though. Like, you know, people are singing her praises right now. This is, like I was saying before, this was the best version of Drew McIntyre I've seen. This is the best version of Nia Jax I've seen. And I think that time away, it definitely did her some good. Um, you know, it may, maybe creative is treating her right. Maybe, maybe I don't know. You know, I don't know what's going on here. But, like, you know, the transformation has been better. She's put on better matches. She's put on better promos. And, like, you know, I would be intrigued, honestly, to see a Rhea Ripley versus Nia Jax. Um for WrestleMania, I don't know though. I I don't know. Um, you know, I think there's a lot of viable contenders here for the Royal Rumble spot, but like I don't know. Again, I mean, th- th- there's purpose here. W- is it to throw a swerve our way? Maybe. I mean, Elimination Chamber, as you mentioned in the last. Yeah, that's uh, what I was just about to say. Maybe that's up. like another, another thing. Maybe another like a little storyline before the main. Main. So, you know, rear rear Ripley definitely is competing in the elimination chamber like that that's that has to be in australia right yeah definitely she has to so like whether it's in the chamber itself maybe night if she's going one-on-one with someone nijax would be a great opponent for that card i think wrestlemania i just don't know if, if nijax is there yet because i feel like you really really needs like a big money opponent um and i mean that that's where we're assuming someone from raw is winning the rumble there you know I, as i mentioned before someone i thought would probably win and it will probably get to later on is bailey i could see bailey but i'm i think i'm still gonna stick with mine and say jade cargo i was like i just i just feel like it's time like there's it's just been so much time past like how much longer are they gonna wait to bring her you know i'm st- i'm sticking with I, that i'm with you i mean this was putty's um break it was a, no he said acquisition of the year for 2023 we named jade cargo i'm like how i love her but like wh- what has she done yet you know granted when she's good when she gets the ball rolling she's gonna be uh, the big star the biggest star probably um but yeah it's like i i can't wait when, when are when she gonna be Royal rumble raw after mania if it's any time after raw after mania like it's like what are they doing what's going on here they they gotta give her a big stage to debut on like that's the only way they've been hyping her up for so long ever since she signed like if they don't give her a big platform to debut on it's just not gonna make sense right and i know like it was it her her mom passed away right yeah or yeah so like i'm, I'm sure i'm sure there's a pause because of that as well um because wwe they, they, they do right with their talent when it comes to personal matters so yeah i mean Clock is winding down, right? I mean, <laughs> 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Can we hear the music for Jade Cargill? Whatever that music is going to be for this, we shall see. But uh, Nia Jax, I mean, 
I, I don't even know what, what, what the odds are here. I haven't seen what Vegas odds are for who's winning Royal Rumble for the women's side. But yeah, I think Nia Jax is going to be up there. That at least the odds climbed in her favor. But moving on here, Samira, going into AEW. Did you hear that, uh, you know, Sting's retiring soon? Did you hear that? <laughs> no, not at all. I had no, no idea. No, no, it's wild. It's wild. I'm talking about Sting the wrestler, not Sting the musician, by the way. Uh, by the way, dude's fucking crazy. He's 60, what, 62 years old doing the Scorpion death drop? <laughs> Like, like it, it was it was wild to see what what he did on Dynamite at this age. But we're get, we're gearing down now to his final match. Jack, uh, Jack Cassidy at Real Jack Cassidy. AEW is teasing that Sting's last match at Revolution will be against the Young Bucks. Dude, let's do this. Lots of excitement about this, but with the excitement comes a lot of confusion. A lot of mixed reactions here actually about this. Uh, what do you think, Smear? Young Bucks is that the right? Call for a last match for Sting? I don't know. I mean, for me personally, I, I don't know. Like, I think it'd be a good match, but for his last match, but at the end of the day, it is up to him whatever he wants to go out on and what he who he wants as his like last opponent that's gonna make him happy and feel fulfilled. But for me personally, I don't think it should it like as a fan, but like at the end of the day, like I said, it's it's his decision and who he wants to face for the last time. Right. It was all it was ultimately his call. Actually, uh, I mm-hmm. think Sean Ross Sapp did report that that uh, Sting did choose the Young Bucks mm-hmm. to be his final performance, which is which is surprising. Actually, like I um I don't know why. <laughs> I mean, it's not, it's not knocking the Young Bucks. I mean, I I do have yeah. I've had my own critiques before in them in the past for other reasons. Um, but you know, I feel like they've grown as talent over the years. Now, now they've been on like mainstream TV and been under the wings of Kenny Omega. Um, but yeah, this one, this one was a head scratch for me. I was like, oh wow, interesting, interesting choice there. But then again, like I'm trying to think, like who who would it be like my first go to would be the Undertaker, but that's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who I would have like thought that he would have chosen, but I just didn't think them. I would have thought it would have been somebody maybe from his past or like, or a passing of the torch m- moment of of somebody maybe younger with him and or, Darby or maybe even, or yeah even Darby. I was just about to say maybe even him, but like, I don't know. I just really wasn't expecting the young bucks. Yeah, no, that was that was a true shocker there. I, but I guess like you know him and Darby they've been teaming for quite some time, and like who else is left for them to face in, in the tag team division there. Uh, and the Young Bucks, I guess they're they're it. Now, Ric Flair obviously going to be in the corner. I think he's going to be a wild card there. I mean, like, how is this going to end up? You know, is this going to be a, 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 you know, Kumbaya, like, you know, a good feel good feelings here. Sting comes out with the win, gets the pin, uh, and they all hug it out in the ring. Or, or do you think there's going to be some sort of um, shenanigans going on? I mean, this is wrestling. There's always going to be <laughs> shenanigans. But I would hope, you know, hope he gets his, like, happy ending happy moment but like i said shenanigans are probably gonna ensue honestly i think we'll get that happy moment and then something's gonna happen right because it's like and then what right and then what for darby and then what for rick flair because we all know rick flair is signed to a longer deal here you know so like i i feel that's why i say about rick flair might be a wild card but let's keep in mind i mean rick flair and sting they have a checkered past. Yes, they're they're buddy buddy now because of just their history, but like they were rivals for a long ass time. People Something don't forget. will happen. Something People don't forget. Do you think Flair might turn and uh join oh. the Young Bucks? Oh heck yeah. Come on. <laughs> Darius playing the game, baby. <laughs> <laughs> And then, like, yeah, I keep the feud going, I guess, with Darby. And maybe Sting becomes a manager. Is, there, is, is this it, though? Is Sting's contract up then? Like, is he completely done? Or does he, is he do, like, a non-competing role? I'm not sure. I wonder, like, if he just doesn't want to wrestle. I wonder if he'll take more of than, like, a backstage role or even mm. a manager role. But I don't, I don't know if I could see him as, like, 
a manager after this like maybe he is going to take a backstage role i wonder how all that's gonna work or if like he's just like done all together yeah or maybe rides off to the sunset you know live a happy life i don't know and i know putty's that's the not one man- thing nobody knows about too i don't think that was like even asked about everybody just knew this was his last match and nobody knew anything afterwards you know a true story putty is not a big sting fan really like i would not be able to do this to- this topic with him here like <laughs> I, I feel like we have to talk about it. like this is a legacy here man this dude's been yeah. wrestling for forever and we're about to see his final match the the end of a of, a, of an era here the stinger um, I I loved it. He was one of my favorite WCW guys growing up. Again, probably before your time. Fuck me. Um, <laughs> but uh, Samira, real fast before we move on, do you have a favorite Sting memory? I still really really liked you know the whole thing with WWE back when they did a what was it a Mania tw- uh, 2015 with um. Triple H. I I thought that was so cool, even though I thought it was weird, like with the NWO thing because they yeah. feuded. Like I'm just like, what the heck? That doesn't make sense. <laughs> but I still thought it was like it was such a super cool moment, like that whole little run that he did. I did enjoy that. I I wish they had a longer run there. Uh, I wish he would have gotten a win. I I don't think he's he's ever won in WWE. Uh, <laughs> the short time that he wrestled there, but. Yeah, I mean, it was it was fun to see. Uh, it was cool to finally see him in the WWE ring. I uh, wish we could have seen more of that. But, yeah, you know, he he's ending the career off the, the on his terms. So, uh, you know, you can't ask for better than that. Uh, moving on here, Samira going on to SmackDown. Bailey was trending quite a bit here with her match against Bianca. Hell of a match. Uh, they always have good chemistry in there. But, you know, there was – people couldn't help but notice. Damage Control had an opportunity to get in there, help – Bailey get the win. They didn't. They didn't. And uh, you know, Dakota Kai uh had to have some words with her. That turn on Bailey going to be crazy, according to Seth at Future Frisky Frisky. A lot of people talking about this. The Bailey face turn looks like it's coming. Will we see Bailey versus Eo Sky at WrestleMania? I don't know. I don't want them to break up. I like damage control. Like, and they've just gotten their, you know, keep getting their group together. It's a solid group. I'm like, no, don't break them up just yet. But uh, I feel like that's what's going to happen. There's going to be a turn right. and it's going to all happen at Mania. I just know it. And it's, they're just going to break up all together. Oh, you think, they're going to have the teams. You think it's going to happen at Mania? Not at Mania, but I think like as we're slowly getting up to there, that's what's going right. to happen, and then it's going to, you know, then finally the match is going to happen there. Got it. You think damage control completely splits up, or you think it's just Bailey's the one that gets ousted? Mm. I think maybe Bailey for now. I wonder if they'll do a thing where then like some of them will start to also like piece off and then join her. I don't know if I'm getting that vibe yet. I I I I'm mean we just got this little that vibe yeah. At all. I was gonna say I mean this is just like the teaser for now. I wonder if like you know they'll do that later on, but yeah, I I think like that's that's what will happen leading up to Mania. You know this I I can't help but think about Judgment Day right when I'm seeing this when Edge first formed Judgment Day and what what happened with him like when they when they turned on him and they stood they did did their own thing right. Now, I feel like that was that went a little too quick, you know, for for my taste. So mm-hmm. on how that happened with Edge, like, oh, this came out of nowhere. But this yeah. has been like building for a while. They're slow playing this, and I feel like they're, they're the timing is perfect in how they're doing it. Uh, that's the vibe that I'm getting here. I think Bailey is going to be ultimately ousted. I think Damage Control will still remain intact and probably be better than ever. Um, Bailey being face man, we haven't seen that in ages. Mm-hmm. And she's just done such incredible work as a heel. I completely reinvented herself. I, I think actually revitalized her career turning heel. She was when she came from NXT as the hugger mm-hmm. uh into WWE, like in the main roster, it was stale. Like it was there, there was just there was no connect there. Like I she was incredibly over in that character as a persona in WWE, but like it didn't necessarily hit 
in a main roster for whatever reason, but until she turned into this. And uh, it's going to be weird. It's going to be interesting to see. Like, you know, does she go? Does she go back to being the hugger? Does she? Does she remain kind of like a version of this? What do you think? I don't know. Like, I can't see her now going back to this hugger gimmick. I know she's like, it's that slow face turn, but like, I don't, I don't see her going full fledged back onto that hugger gimmick. I don't think it's just gonna like, or is it something else? It used to, yeah. I think it's gonna have to be something else because she's not that person anymore. She's not like in that era anymore. It's past. It's been done with. Like, I see you, (laughs) Swifty. You know me, um, but like it's just not that anymore. It's not gonna hit like how it did back in like 2014. It's not her anymore. So she has to create something else. This new baby face version of her as this like new persona in a sense. Right, right. It cannot be the same as it is right now per se because she's mm-hmm. just such a clear heel. Uh, this version of herself. She can't go back to being the hugger, that's for sure, because that just did not work. And you're right, that's a completely different era for her. Um, I don't even think her like finding it in between would work. I, I think it's just got it has to be something else in a way, like uh, you know, because she's naturally going to get like the babyface reaction and like the, the sympathy because like she was betrayed by her group. So there's going to be that, right? But then it's going to be then what? You know, and, and I'm curious to see how she transforms her character uh, at this point here. Uh, so, Bailey, you know, Sky, I think we kind of agree here that that looks like it's going to happen. Yeah. So th- that that means that means Bailey's winning Rumble. Boom. We just we just figure it out. <laughs> we I'm just still it on out. Jane Cargill. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here. Samira agrees with me. Bailey's winning the Royal Rumble. <laughs> Set in stone. Uh, but yeah, that is all I have for TV. Samir, do you have anything else you want to add before we move on? Go, Emily. Go, Emily. I agree with that. Go, Emily. <laughs> Good job. You you lasted the whole show here. Uh, thank you for joining me. This is awesome. Uh, you didn't curse me out once. So right away, I like you way better than Michael J. Putty. Uh, you said my name right. So that's awesome, too. Um how was your first experience here on Shot of Wrestling? Not as it a was, guest. It was fun. You know I like talking about wrestling, so this was like fun to be a part of and see how you guys do your things. Because I've you know I've listened to your shows before, so it's like fun to now like you have? be here and talk with. Oh you. wow! I never guys. I never li- talked to anyone that listened to a show. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> you have fans. You guys have supporters. <laughs> we do. We do. We do. We say who listens to this show, but people do. Yeah. <laughs> But it was fun being on here and getting to talk wrestling. Like I said, like what we would just kind of set off camera. It's it's nice to also like talk about it and hear what other people think. And it makes you think about like other things too. And you're like, dang, that could also happen. And like, it, it's fun. It's a fun time. Yeah. Like the rock joining the bloodline. Didn't even fucking cross my mind, Samir, until you brought it up. Mind blown. For <laughs> those ideas. who are listening to the show, I have never in my, what, how many years have we been doing this show? Never have I ever gotten up and just be like, oh, what type of uh, motion here from my seat based off what someone said here in this podcast? Samira was the first one to do that for me. Um, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Now, my daughter's been watching Moana, by the way, right? Hooked on Moana. Uh, have you seen it? Yeah, I have. So anytime someone says, you're welcome now, I, I think, you're welcome. I think of the song. It's so annoying (laughs) that happens like you get those songs stuck in your head like i know when my little cousin comes over and she likes coco melon so you got to play the songs that she goes for the wheels on the bus and you got to do this stuff with her Mm -hmm. so it's so funny though now thank god my daughter's not a coco melon trip (laughs) we had a we had a, a nanny that and my daughter was like way too young at the time but I was playing the TV and the Coco Melon come on. So I I work from home. So I would hear all this stuff. I'm like, what the fuck is he playing? What is this music? What is this song? What are these characters? Because now I'm like looking down at the TV, seeing what's going on here. <laughs> was not a fan of Coco Melon. Wasn't a fan. But my daughter's also into like uh, mini bow tunes, right? 
So like, I, I, I don't know if you, I don't know if you know that you don't have kids. So uh, why would you know this? But like, yeah, all, all these kids, just they love to listen to the same stuff over and over and over oh, again. Yeah. And, I, and uh, it just, it's catchy. It's and then it gets head. stuck in your head. And then you're just like, oh my God. Yeah. So please, for the love of God, no one say you're welcome around me anymore. <laughs> That'd be great. I love the rock. He's not necessarily the best singer, but like, yeah, it just, oh my God. It just starts playing. But uh, Samir, so we, we talked about in the beginning of the show, we have BCW. Uh, Welcome to the New Year coming up January 20th. You will be working that show as I will be on the side of Vicious Vicky for her women's championship match as she defends it against Ultraviolet. Uh, what matches do you have uh, on your radar coming up at this show that, um, that you'll be watching closely besides Vicious Vicky Smash, of course. Uh, what, what we talked about earlier, um, Darius and Anthony versus Face and Jay Bougie. I think that's going to go real hard. I'm excited. Um, I'm excited to see Emily's match. I mean, this is going to be the first time that AJ is in her corner. So I wondered, like, I'm wondering to see how that exactly plays out. Like, will she get her first win? Or wait, no, she, she won at the last show. But, you know, a win under... AJ's guidance like that that does make me I mean like he 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 did he did guide her the last yeah you know I I I I was shocked okay I was standing there and I was like it's like okay that happened this is happening yeah Yeah. that's a side of Emily you you never knew existed right like who is this person it's all AJ's fault the governor's fault it's all AJ's fault and that people say I'm a bad person AJ's a schmuck it's the governor's fault. Trying to get me to ref too. I'm not a referee. I'm a right. correspondent. Right. Exactly. It's a disrespect to the profession of refs. You you have to go for training for it. it. There's a lot you have to learn and know. You can't just throw anyone in there. He did that to me. I was gonna say he did that to you. He did that to me. AJ. Let me tell you about AJ Pan. <laughs> I I I've had my dealings with AJ Pan outside of the squared circle and, and like listen, the 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 person. We, we we've had nice conversations before we've gotten along well but professionally when he, when he when he turns into the governor we when he gets into that when he puts on that, that stupid mink coat you know, this stupid sunglasses and, and he puts his to- ponytail back he becomes a douchebag throwing around <laughs> throwing around his weight and his power you do this you do that this is, what, what are you doing man i thought we we're boys He's excited to be a governor. It gets to his head. Thanks a lot, AJ. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, AJ. And thanks a lot to you, Samir, for joining the show. <laughs> <laughs> um, and thank you to our fans uh, and our listeners here. Uh, you guys rock. Uh, make sure you get tickets. If you're, again, if you're in the Tri-State area, BCW, welcome to the new year. It is this Saturday. Doors open at 4 o'clock at Richfield Park, New Jersey. Um, and honestly, you guys do us a huge please like, subscribe to our YouTube page. Follow us at all forms of social media at Shot of Wrestling. Guys, it's been a blast. For Samira, for Michael J. Putty, who's not here, doesn't care about you guys. I do, though. I'm your favorite actor, Mark Schwann. Out. Hey, baby, I hear the bell ringing, hip tosses and body slams. Oh, my. And maybe you seem a bit confused. Yeah, baby, but I got you pinned. Ha, 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 ha. But I don't know what to do when I see them with that golden case. They're cashing it in. Authority all in my face. What is a man to do? Good night, everybody. <laughs>